And now, finally, so we went through the paper, we went through all the summaries of the <laughs> of every section of it. Now I'm going to go over a summary of that uh, it's my own summary of, of the entire key parts of the paper. Uh, so this video has served as a study of mainstream virology in general for me, and I hope it has for you as well. While the video covers the paper in its entirety, much of it discusses assumptions, theories, and narratives behind the specific experiments actually yeah, beyond the specific experiments actually performed in the paper. Yes, and uh, so now to better grasp the key claims of the paper, I will summarize only the main parts of the paper's most important claim, which is the assumption of a, quote, new disease-causing virus. So ChatGPT, so here's the summary, ChatGPT says the following paper is the main paper on the isolation of the, quote, virus that causes COVID-19. Here's a paper link from the New England Journal of Medicine right there. So a novel coronavirus from patients with pneumonia in China 2019 by Zhu Eyal and Latin, uh, the Eyal is Latin for and others, uh, published on January 24th, 2020, updated on January 29th, 2020, and appears in the February 20, 2020 uh, issue of the New England Journal of Medicine, NEJM. And uh, so on December 31st, 2019, the China CDC sent a res rapid response team to Wuhan to investigate reported clusters of patients with pneumonia or, or inflammation of the uh, lungs. Of, of quote unknown cause and had recently been to or in contact with someone someone because they were linked to it that had been to the uh huanan uh, yeah huan huanan seafood market in wuhan this paper reports the results of the yeah the results of the investigation uh the chest radiographs of a patient whom no samples uh were taken from no samples were or no biopsy samples were taken from with pneumonia and uh, assumed to be from the quote new virus is shown below. So these are just radiographs of it. Yeah, so there's no uh, biopsy or uh, samples taken from them. There's just some images and assumed that it's from the new virus and it just shows uh, this, this cloudy stuff. So figure one, patient two on uh, days eight and 11 after start of illness, mechanical ventilation or assisted breathing was performed between the time periods of the two images. And the cloudy or hazy areas uh, more present than bottom image, supposedly indicated accumulation of fluid around the lungs. It was becoming more hazy. And again, this period between this image and this image had mechanical ventilation. So that may be a, a factor too. So four lower respiratory tract, uh, throat slash lungs region samples were collected from the unknown uh, cause pneumonia patients who were in Wuhan on December 21st, 2019 or later and had been present in the market. Uh, seven samples were collected from known cause pneumonia patients from Beijing to be used as control samples. Nucleic acids were extracted from both sets of samples and uh, PCR or yes, yeah, so extracted from both of these. So you extract from the patients from the four uh, samples from those patients from Wuhan and then seven samples from the Beijing control samples. And, and they were extracted from them. So PCR, DNA, DNA uh, replication tests uh, were done on the nucleic acids to the test for known sequences from 22 quote viruses and four bacteria, and presumably they weren't found in the Wuhan ones. Yeah, and I just wrote that here. So presumably they weren't found in the Wuhan samples. And then modern whole genome sequencing technology was used to quote discover sequences not identifiable by the above PCR methods, and then RT PCR reverse transcription PCR. Uh, basically goes from RNA conversion to DNA. Then DNA replication assay was used to detect what viral RNA by targeting a specific genetic sequence that is common to many beta coronaviruses. After uh, quote unknown sequences and or uh, fix that after discovering quote unknown sequences and quote viral RNA, the next step was to quote isolate the virus. And then basically had respiratory samples were uh, collected from unknown caused pneumonia patients. And then you had chemical preservatives were added, possibly including fetal bovine, bovine serum to the samples. Samples were centrifuged to remove, quote, cellular debris, and the supernatant was collected. Now you have passage one. Uh, the supernatant was used to, quote, infect human airway epithelial cells obtained from lung cancer surgery patients. And, uh, yes, and then the next up was the uh, airway cells uh, right here. Yeah, these uh, airway cells, which, uh, again, the supernatant from the... Yeah, patient samples were used to infect these human airway epithelial cells uh, grown from uh, these lung cancer surgery patients and then used to infect them. So the airway cells were initially grown on a 
plastic surface in an air liquid interface, bottom in contact with liquid, and the top of there for four to six weeks. Prior to supernatant infection, the quote, yeah, the top parts of the airway cell cultures were washed three times with a water-based salt solution. This is phosphate buffered saline or uh, PBS. And then 0.15 milliliters of supernatant was placed, aka infected, um, uh, on the top surface of the cell culture. And uh, of the, again, the cancer patient cell, cell culture. The supernatant infected cell culture was then placed in an incubator at 37 degrees Celsius uh, with 5% CO2 in an air liquid interface. After two hours of incubation, quote, unbound virus was removed by washing with 0.5 milliliters of PBS for 10 minutes. Every 48 hours, 0.15 milliliters of PBS was added to the top surface or the apical, uh, apical surface or, or the apical part of the airway cells. And then after 10 minutes of incubation at 37 percent, I mean 37 degrees uh, Celsius, the apical uh, samples or the top surface of them were har were harvested or uh, i.e. removed. So you remove them after 10, 10 minutes. The removed apical uh, top surface samples were diluted at a ratio of 1 to 3 to a new cell culture and monitored, monitored daily for cytopathic effects, cell breakdown, cell uh, slash cell death via an optical light microscope. And then viral nucleic acid in the supernatant uh, was also yeah, being tasted uh, via uh, RT-PCR, basically going from RNA to DNA, then replicating. So that's how they were testing. They're monitoring daily for that. And there's the mock, and there's the human airway epithelial cell. So figure two, mock infected, which the paper doesn't elaborate any further, on the left, and quote, a new virus infected, uh, human airway epithelial HAE cell cultures on the right. Visualized with an optical light microscope, and then cytopathic effects CD, CPE were supposedly observed four days after a cold infection. And the arrow points to a lack of coordinated movement from cilia or hair like structures on the surface of epithelial cells that move mucus and trap particles out of the respiratory tract. So, supposedly, that's CPE. <laughs> All right, uh, the supernatant in the last step was then removed and used to quote, infect another airway cell culture and then repeat it again for a total of three passages. After these three passages, the supernatant from the airway cell cultures that showed these cytopathic effects were then collected. The supernatant was then, uh, then quote, virus inactivated for at least two hours by chemical preservatives, uh, yeah, by the chemical preservative paraformaldehyde, which, quote, fixes or locks molecules in place, uh, yeah, preventing further changes, aka prevents, quote, virus replication. Then the supernatant was ultra centrifuge to sediment, quote, virus particles. This, uh, and this sediment is called enriched supernatant. The enriched supernatant was then placed on thin grade stain with heavy metals to provide contrast for electron microscope imaging. And similarly, after three passages, the airway cell cultures themselves and not the supernatant that showed cytopathic effects were collected. The airway cell cultures were fixed with chemical preservatives para formaldehyde with or all right with the chemical preservatives para formaldehyde and glutaralhyde uh, then they were fixed uh oh, glutaral yeah glutaraldehyde were then then they were fixed with it, with the heavy metal preservatives osmium tetroxide and they were de dehydrated with ethanol alcohol which penetrates cell membranes and replaces water and uh and replaces water molecules with the uh, within the cells yeah, it replaces water molecules in uh, within the cells. Then they were embedded in the resin PON8112. And then ultra-thin 80 nanometer sections were cut from the resin block and stained with the heavy metals urinal, or uranyl acetate and lead citrate. The negative stained grids containing the supernatant and ultra-thin sections containing the airway cell cultures were observed with an electron microscope. All right, so you got the supernatant and you got this uh, ultra thin sections here, the airway epithelial cells that were supposedly infected. And again, remember these uh, airway cells are from uh, the cancer patients. So electron microscope images, so A, vi quote, virus particles from the supernatant, and then B, airway cell cultures, and then you have the arrowheads indicate uh, extracellular viruses. That's this right here, extracellular. And then arrows indicate inclusion bodies or, quote, virus factors within cells. It's right here. Then triangles indicate cilia. 
uh, that is the, uh, that, uh, the hair-like structures on the epithelial cells. And the, quote, virus particles termed viron supposedly showed, quote, spikes on the outer surface and supposedly give the appearance of a solar corona. So this supposedly gives the appearance of a solar corona. Uh, hashtag supposedly. <laughs> yeah, so these virus particles uh, termed virons supposedly show spikes. They show these little thingies on the outer surfaces and then supposedly give the appearance of a solar corona. Hashtag supposedly indeed because uh, <laughs> this uh, wouldn't pass a video on math easy as evidence. Uh, anyways, going further, so RNA was extracted from the patient airway fluid samples and cell culture supernatants. Yeah, so from both of them, uh, and uh, yeah, from the uh, patient airway fluid samples of the patients and the cell cultures supernatants, this RNA was assumed to be, quote, from a virus. This RNA was used as a template for moder modern sequencing technology to produce a, quote, virus genome. This novel virus genome was identified in, quote, all three patients. And the three genome sequences were sent to the GI, uh, GISAID, or the Global Initiative on Sharing All Influenza Data. And then, uh, yeah, Global, clo uh, global um, quote, Flu Virus Database. Statistical and computational analysis were performed on a likely evolutionary history of the, of the quote, virus genome. And then the three genomes have a 86.9 similarity with a previously published, quote, PAT, bat coronavirus genome. So there is uh, the... 29,892 base pairs of this, uh, of the SARS, uh, I mean, of this COVID-19 virus genome, this novel coronavirus. All right. And then this is in red. So the red beta coronavirus are the grouping for the supposed quote, novel, uh, COVID virus. So this right here. So there is the, uh, whoops, there is the supposed virus right there. The new one, that's the grouping. They somehow got all that in there.